I'm Megan Hene, and we're today going to be talking about how to find links and resources pages using the Link Prospector. Links and resource pages are often so different from blog pages. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. Sure. So yeah, we've found a couple of great links and resource pages. Um, the first one is Financial Advisor. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, she has on this, she actually has a resources and links page and she has a bunch of resources to help people that visit her website with different financial concerns they may have. I mean, this looks like a pretty well done site, but if yes. you had a solid resource on, you know, how uh, someone could get you know, how someone can help themselves financially, she might be someone you could reach out to and say, hey, will you include, will you include my link in your page uh, for your audience? Yes, um, because you can see from this page, she includes links to lots and lots of resources. So that's good news for us. Links and resource pages can actually come from businesses, such especially businesses with the intent of helping people, or in this case, helping animals. So if you had a great a resource for helping pets, this would be an example of a site you can reach out to. And as you can see, both of these sites are very different from traditional bloggers. Both of these people aren't just simply, you know, writing weekly or biweekly posts on different topics. They're websites that have to do with something bigger, either a cause or a business or a larger entity. One other good way to think about the difference between um, writing content for bloggers and writing content for links and resource pages is what at Citation Labs we call the difference between in funnel and out of funnel content. That you know, when you're doing blog outreach programs, you're still often quote unquote in funnel. You're looking for people, for bloggers whose readers are you know, very much highly in your target market. You're going to be writing yep. content that leads more directly into your product, what you're selling, what you want people to be interested in. And, and Whereas, so by, by saying in funnel, you mean actually inside the sales, sales funnel type exactly. of environment. Okay, so it's about products. It's about sales that we're interested in. So that's in funnel. Yep. Right. An out of funnel uh, content is still high quality content, but mm -hmm. it might be less directly mm -hmm. in the sales funnel. So this is content that is, uh, you know, someone reading it might not actually be someone who um, is is very close to making a purchase in mm -hmm. in for your type of product. And you're you might be thinking like, well then. You know, why am I going to all the effort to make this content? Um, and I would say the answer is that links and resource pages, if you can write the right content um, that's high quality, it can help build you a lot of links, which can really help raise the profile of some of your more in funnel content. Um, and, and it can also just be a branding awareness play too, that even if they're not ready to purchase yet or they're not in funnel for you yet, they might be a few months down the road. We're going to come up with a fictitious example. We're doing uh -huh. links and resource page uh, link building for a moving company. If you're going to go directly in funnel, um, it might be like how to best, how to pack your kitchen the best way. In order to find the right topics, the right pages that you can create content for, you want to actually play around with Google. So I started off with moving with kids uh, and I did a dot gov search I ended up with pages that were on exercise with kids and I was like oh no so for the rest of it I tried relocating with kids yeah and that's that's when I came you know I found more uh pages that actually had to do with what we're look the topic we're looking for, which well, is you know moving to a new home. One of the things um, I love about this, um, Megan, is that you, you know you're expert in this area, yet you still have to try these things out to oh, yeah. find them, and there's surprises there. <laughs> you know, if we'd been talking separately without having done that search, I would have think, hey, moving with kids, yeah, of course, uh, <laughs> that's easily understandable. But when you showed that example of how it's reflected in Google searches, you realize, well, that's not the right word to be chasing. Exactly. And that's, I mean, that's kind of, as with most uh, areas of research, it's not so much knowing your stuff as knowing how to find your stuff. When you're looking for links and resource pages in order to come up with good topics, you want to move away from the sales space. And the best way to get yourself out of the sales space with your key terms 
is to search in the .edu and .gov space because most .edu and .gov sites aren't selling as much as mm -hmm. .coms are. They're, you know, they're, they have the financial freedom in a way to, yep. to provide more informational content. And when you're creating content for links and resource pages, that's exactly the kind of content that you want to create. Highly informational, less salesy. So, you know, I, uh -huh. I went through a few of these just with different moving with pets, moving with parents, some cool things I found. So and this is just a great way to think about content ideas. You know, one of them, like dot edu had a, my partner is moving in, but they're allergic to my pets. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> like, that's so interesting. Pet allergies. I hadn't even thought about that with moving or, um, uh, you know, obviously when you're talking about moving with parents, you might talk about parents, senior citizens moving in, or you might be talking uh -huh. about moving them to an assisted living care center. So you have a different, you know, it just kind of opens up the brainstorming for links and resource pages about what people care about in this area. Yeah, so just by taking that little step, you expand the whole <laughs> universe of content that you can tap into and place yourself in. Um, so one, one I did find, California Department of Public Health, and it's talking about when you're moving your pet into or out of California. And that's, yep. you know, that's, if California has laws for it, probably a lot of states do. So a guide to, you know, moving your pet in different states. You're moving to Maryland. What do you need to know about having your pet taken care of? That's going to be interesting to people who are doing local link building campaigns. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's a great way to get into local. You extrapolate your thinking. Well, if one mm -hmm. state has uh, got regulations here and guidance, then lots of states are likely to have the same sort of thing. Uh, one more step that you want to take once you have some ideas of, of what you want to uh -huh. search for is you want to test your phrases. And this is just a good way to um, not use up credits wastefully. You can type in your search terms, type in with in URL colon links at HTML and type them into Google and see how many results you're getting. You know, if there's only three or four results, then it, chances are there's not going to be a lot of websites around that when you put in the link prospector. Um, if you get, you know, yeah. a well, few dozen or a few hundred, then that's probably a good, a good research phrase to use. Once you have your search terms, you're not yep. going to do so many advanced options. It's not like we're looking for a page that was created within the last year necessarily. You're doing this preparation before you even come to the Link Prospector tool. Then you're going to get better results. You're going to get them quicker. <laughs> Shall we have a look at how all of this then looks in when we move on to Link Prospector? Mm -hmm. I did one more focused around international relocation because I think that's another area where people need a lot of information, are going to be looking up a lot of information. So mm -hmm. as you can see, we ended up with a lot of expat based pages that have links and resource pages. These are sites that have to do, for the most part, with moving abroad, um, and that include links pages. Uh, now, I did another one, and what I did with this second search is I just included in URL colon links at HTML alongside my research phrases. So mm -hmm. even though the link prospector already uses a lot of footprints to help identify the kinds of pages you're looking for, using in URL colon links at HTML right next to all five research phrases that you're using, it specifies better. And you can see, I mean, with the first one, I got 1,719 total domains. The second one, I got only 348. So this was a way to narrow it down to make sure I'm only getting links and resource pages to yep. these are just a bit more specifically, definitely links pages or websites with links pages. Again, I love the way that you've narrowed it down here. Uh, you've got fewer results, but you've got more specific results. One of the questions I have is you got really excited in the guest posting video about contacting people and finding mm -hmm. a, a personal rapport. Is that the same with links pages? It is less personal. I think it's less relationship based and it's more I've got a high quality resource for you. It's a, it's a little bit more, I would say, business uh, oriented in, in outreach. Okay, I, th I, I think that's a, an excellent point to finish on. You, you've really helped clarify that. You know, the links and resources page are different and the way you approach them for links is different. 